Infected by a strange parasite, tenants of a luxury apartment complex turn into mindless, aggressive sexual predators. A young couple drives up to a high-end apartment building, situated on a secluded island called Starliner Towers. They are greeted by the doorman and they inform him of their appointment and the building manager, Mr. Merrick, is notified. Elsewhere in the building, Annabelle Brown, a young woman who lives in the apartment complex, is desperately trying to block Dr. Emil Hobbs from getting in her room. The doctor eventually breaks through, pushing her onto the bed and as he enters, he gives her a sinister stare. Dr. Hobbs and Annabelle wrestle on the bed and she fights feverishly, getting her clothes torn in the process. Back at the lobby, Mr. Merrick arrives and welcomes the young couple to Starliner Towers, asking what type of unit they're interested in. Back in Annabelle's room, she continues desperately to get to the door but Dr. Hobbs grabs her from behind and shoves her onto the couch. As the young couple is shown available room options in Merrick's office, Dr. Hobbs pins down Annabelle in her room, grabbing her neck and strangling her until she stops squirming. Now lifeless, Dr. Hobbs places surgical tape on her mouth, carries her, places her on a dining table, and removes her clothes. In another apartment unit, Nick Tudor is in the bathroom using a water jet flosser when he suddenly gags. Janine, his wife, enters, thinking he said something and notifies him that breakfast is ready. While his wife closes the bathroom door, Nick rubs his abdomen to feel for something. As the couple eats breakfast, Janine asks Nick if she can call him later at the office, but he coldly and distantly asks why she would want to call him at the office, ending their conversation awkwardly. Back in Annabelle's room, with the doctor unclothed as well and wearing a surgical mask, he grabs a scalpel and makes an incision on Annabelle's stomach. Then, he stretches the wound open and dumps acid in. As he watches the acid work, he grabs the same scalpel and puts it to his throat, slicing it open and ending his own life as well. A few moments later, Merrick, the young couple, and Nick share a ride on the elevator. A few floors pass and Merrick, along with the young couple, get off the lift. With Nick left alone, he presses the 15th floor button. On the 15th floor, Nick uses a key to enter apartment 1511. He enters and calls out Annabelle's name but is shocked to discover her mutilated body. Gagging at the horrendous sight, he frantically leaves the room. In another tenant's apartment, Janine and her friend, Betts, discuss the married couple's issues. Betts advises Janine to set up an appointment for Nick with the building medical officer, Dr. St. Luke, without her husband's knowledge. Reluctant, Janine agrees in desperation, just to find a way to help her emotionally distant husband. At Nick's place of employment, seemingly dazed, Nick surprises his secretary, who notes that she did not expect him to come. Back at the Starliner Towers, Annabelle and Dr. Hobbs' bodies are discovered by Dr. Roger St. Luke. Inside Annabelle's room, Merrick is talking with Detective Heller, stating that Dr. Hobbs paid rent for the apartment, but it was Annabelle's name on the residency list. Detective Heller calls over Dr. St. Luke and asks if he moved or touched the body, answering he removed the surgical tape to examine her mouth. The doctor continues that he also briefly inspected the abdominal wound. He shares that he knew Dr. Hobbs from medical school and that he saw Annabelle around the building but never had any interaction with her. The detective asks how he discovered the bodies and the doctor shares that Dr. Hobbs called him, asking him to meet up at apartment 1511 to have lunch, offering to further his education. He adds that he found this odd because he hasn't heard from Hobbs in a while. The detective further probes, asking if Hobbs sounded depressed or nervous, but Dr. St. Luke tells him he sounded normal. Suddenly, they are interrupted by a phone ringing. Merrick answers the phone and tells Dr. St. Luke it's a man inquiring why he didn't make it to lunch, puzzling the three men. Later that day, Dr. St. Luke has lunch with Dr. Linsky, the man on the phone and a colleague from medical school that also worked with Dr. Hobbs. Dr. Linsky shares that they were working on an alternative to organ transplants using parasites. However, Dr. St. Luke brushes the idea off, saying that it's crazy. Back in Nick's workplace, he gets a call and the secretary buzzes him. Without a response, the secretary enters her boss's office to see Nick in a daze, with blood leaking from his mouth. In a bid to help him, his secretary offers to get him to a hospital, but he refuses and tells her to call a cab to take him home instead. Back in Dr. Linsky's office, Dr. St. Luke asks how Annabelle and Dr. Hobbs met. Linsky tells him they met at a school he was lecturing in and Hobbs was caught touching Annabelle's for a checkup in the faculty lounge even though she was just 12 years old back then. Afterward, Dr. St. Luke bids farewell to his fellow doctor but before he leaves, Linsky asks him again to think about joining him in his research. Back at Starliner Towers, Nick arrives home and pours himself a drink. At the building's medical clinic, Dr. St. Luke reviews Nick's medical records but tells Janine he doesn't see any cause for alarm. Janine pleads to check anyway, so he agrees and tells her he can come by later tonight. In the two doors apartment, Nick suddenly gags, dropping to the floor. He gets up, throws up blood in the bathroom, and wipes his bloody mouth with a towel. On their apartment's balcony, Nick throws up again as two elderly women with an umbrella are passing below. They feel something hit their umbrella and one of them suspects it's a dead bird. However, it was a leech-like creature, now crawling away on the grass and entering a grate. 
In the laundry room, a lady is doing her laundry when she sees blood-like stains trailing from the washer next to hers. Upon opening the lid, a leech-like creature unexpectedly jumps, grabbing her face. She fearfully screams and rolls around the floor but eventually stops moving. Back at Dr. St. Luke's clinic, a male patient complains about lumps in his abdomen and thinks he got it from Annabelle because he's seen the same lumps on her. The doctor then gives an address of another hospital for further diagnosis to the man. Later at Tudor's apartment, Janine is startled to see a hand underneath the fridge door as she enters her home. She finds Nick on the base of the fridge and helps him up to the next room. Afterward, Janine discovers blood in their bathroom. Concerned and distraught, she cries as she cleans up. Meanwhile, in their bedroom, Nick talks to the parasite that is bulging and moving around in his abdomen, saying they'll be good friends. Janine hears him talking and asks if he's feeling okay, but her husband tells her to just leave him alone. Frustrated, Janine leaves, asking why he doesn't want her help. Back at the clinic, at the request of Dr. St. Luke, Nurse Forsyth compiled medical records from the tenants involved in Hobbs and Annabelle's case. As he reads, Nurse Forsyth starts flirting with him, asking for a kiss as a reward for all her hard work, but is abruptly interrupted by a phone ringing. On the phone, Dr. Linsky shares that Hobbes' true intentions weren't to infect everyone with a parasite crossed with a venereal disease and an aphrodisiac to make everyone a lustful, mindless creature. Annabelle was the test subject that went awry, and that killing her and pouring acid inside her was a move to stop the spread. Dr. St. Luke shares that he thinks Dr. Hobbes was not successful at stopping the parasite because there are other infected tenants. Elsewhere in the building, Betts is in the bathtub relaxing, drinking wine and lathering soap. Unbeknownst to her, a parasite is slowly making its way to her from the drain. Shortly after, she realizes there's something in the water, but it's already too late. As it enters inside her, she screams and the water turns red. Back in the clinic, Nurse Forsythe invites Dr. St. Luke to supper later. He accepts and watches her leave towards the elevators. Back in the building lobby, the doorman opens the door for a delivery man with a cart full of food orders for Unit 416. When he reaches the desired floor and moves through the corridor, a door suddenly opens. An elderly lady with burns on her face exclaims she's hungry for love and aggressively grabs the delivery man, pulling him inside the room. At Dr. Linsky's office, he continues to look over at Dr. Hobbs's papers and pictures of Annabelle. He then grabs his jacket and decides to head to Starliner Towers. Meanwhile, as Nurse Forsythe prepares supper in her apartment, a knock on the door startles her. She opens the door and finds a man standing there, so she asks if she can help him with anything. He replies yes with an unnerving look on his face. Realizing the danger, she tries to close the door on him, but he barges through. He grabs her, trying to get her clothes off and forcing himself on her. She fights him off and stabs him with a kitchen fork to the neck, making him drop to the floor. Immediately after, she uses this as a chance to get away. As Dr. St. Luke is about to leave the clinic, Nurse Forsythe runs towards him in a panic. She tells him what just happened and the doctor tells her to stay before he checks her apartment. Inside the apartment, the doctor sees all the signs of their struggle but does not see the intruder. On the floor, he sees blood and some biological material, so he scoops up a sample but is startled by utensils falling, accidentally pushed by the nurse. In the building's corridors, an elderly couple encounters a parasite as it tries to crawl up the woman's walking stick and onto her arm. The man manages to get the parasite off, hitting it using the woman's walking stick. When Dr. St. Luke escorts Nurse Forsyth, they come across the elderly couple. Seeing the woman's wounds, the man explains he hit the parasite down the garbage. Then, the doctor tells them to stay in the clinic and to not let anyone in except him before he heads to the basement to check the garbage. At the apartment's elevators, a mother and her child see the door open. The delivery man, now infected, enters the lift and attacks the mother as the door closes behind him. In the two doors home, Nick calls for Janine from their bedroom. She enters the room and asks Nick if he's feeling alright, and he responds that he's feeling fine. He begins to act affectionate and when they kiss, Janine feels the parasite in his abdomen, shocking her so she pulls away. Elsewhere in the building, Dr. St. Luke makes his way to the basement. Using a crowbar, he rummages through the trash. Eventually, he finds a parasite but drops it when he is suddenly grabbed from behind by an infected custodian. The custodian punches and kicks him, slamming him into boxes. Still holding the crowbar, he hits the custodian on the head and repeatedly attacks him, making sure he's dead. Back in the tutor's bedroom, Nick continues to force himself onto Janine. However, she knows that there's something wrong and makes an excuse to get her contact lenses on. After putting them on, she returns and embraces an unresponsive Nick. Unexpectedly, she sees a parasite coming out of his mouth and she frightfully leaves the room while crying. Janine heads to Beth's apartment, only to find her friend standing in the middle of a dark room with her back to the door. At the doorman's desk, he hears an alarm so he investigates around. The elevator door opens, revealing the delivery man, the mother, and the child, who are all infected. The doorman is overpowered by the three, pinning him on the floor and he is infected. Inside Nurse Forsythe's apartment, the elderly couple and nurse can hear banging on the door and insane laughter from the corridor. Worried, the nurse tries to call the police, but the phone lines are dead. She leaves the elderly couple in her apartment and tries to look for the doctor but stumbles on the custodian's dead body in the basement. 
Meanwhile, Dr. St. Luke reaches the lobby and Mr. Merrick is surprised at his bloodied condition. The manager asks if he's okay, but the doctor instructs him to get in contact with the police and tells them they need help. Then, the doctor proceeds to make a phone call to Nurse Forsythe's apartment. The elderly man answers and tells him that the nurse went out to find him. After their call, a group of infected residents break the locks and barge into the nurse's home, attacking the elderly couple. In the parking lot, Nurse Forsythe heads for her car and discovers that the garage doors are closed. As she opens her car door, an infected man suddenly appears and forces himself on her. Fortunately, Dr. St. Luke hears her screaming, finds her, and he reaches into the infected man's pocket and finds a gun. He hesitantly aims but shoots twice, killing the man. Afterward, he pulls the dead man's body out of the car to get in. He backs up the car to prepare to crash through the garage doors. As they drive towards the garage door to ram it, they are crashed by another car before they could reach the barrier. Dr. St. Luke and Nurse Forsythe are shaken but alive and they escape through the broken windshield. Back at Beth's apartment, while Janine is sobbing on her friend's lap, Beth asks if her body feels good to her. The mood changes when Beth asks her to make love with her. As they kiss, a lump in the shape of a parasite appears on Janine's throat, infecting her as well. Meanwhile, somewhere in the apartment's basement, Dr. St. Luke and Nurse Forsythe find a place to hide out until the police arrive. Outside the Starliner Towers, Dr. Linsky finally arrives and he enters the apartment complex but fails to locate Dr. St. Luke. He looks around and finds Nick on a bed sleeping. Dr. Linsky removes the blanket covering him, revealing a wound from where the parasite bursts through his abdomen. While inspecting the wound, a parasite suddenly jumps onto his face and he screams as his face burns. He gets to the kitchen sink and tries to remove the parasite off his face with a pair of pliers. While Dr. Linsky tries to kill the parasite, Nick grabs him from behind, takes the pliers away from him, and strikes him repeatedly. Back at the building's basement, Nurse Forsythe shares her sensual dreams to Dr. St. Luke. She leans in closer for a kiss, but before she kisses him, a parasite appears from her mouth. So the doctor strikes her, knocking her out, and grabs a piece of cloth to wrap it around her mouth. He picks her up and they go through a corridor, where hands suddenly appear in the gaps between the walls. They get a hold of Nurse Forsythe, pulling her away from Dr. St. Luke, so the doctor has no choice but to let her go to escape. Anywhere the doctor goes, he sees infected people and their illicit acts. Looking for a way out, Dr. St. Luke heads upstairs when he sees two girls acting like dogs. In the hallway, the doctor stumbles upon two men, so he runs inside a room, where he sees an infected man and woman. Immediately, he leaves and eventually reaches the swimming pool area. He frantically looks for an unlocked door, trying each pane one by one. Finally, he finds an unlocked sliding door and gets out. However, he quickly realizes that he is trapped, surrounded by the infected residents with the entire island being overrun. Forced back into the pool area, Dr. St. Luke is pushed into the water, where the entire horde jumps in. They swim towards him, but before they could all reach him, an infected nurse Forsythe kisses him. The Starliner Tower's garage door opens and the infected building's tenants drive out in their cars, leaving the apartment complex to continue spreading the mind-altering parasites. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.